Uh, first, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna title this video yet, but whatever it is, it's not clickbait. Second, what is this disgusting shirt, you may ask? Well, it's the actual shirt that I wore on Holy. I want to wear it now, fuck you. Three, I am changing all of the names in the story for ones that are completely random. Uh, if you recognize anyone, don't dox them. So, in the video where I talked about my India plans, I said this. I am very aware of my own mortality. I am not going to Kashmir, I am not going to Rotak, I am not going to Mirut, I am not going to Gurgaon at night. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I went to Mirut. So, how did I get there? <laughs> so I had, I had my holy figured out. I was gonna go to JNU and spend holy there. And I had a friend in JNU that could get me in, and, and I, was, I was gonna have a grand old time. The day before, <laughs> I get a text from my JNU boy, and the text reads, Holy in JNU is cancelled, there was a fight. Which, which, honestly, did not surprise me, <laughs> because JNU, right? So, what did I do? I activated the network of boys. I texted everyone I knew in Delhi, asking them if they had any plans for Holy. One dude that... For story purposes, I'm gonna call Sanjay. So Sanjay answered me and he said, and I will tell you what he said verbatim. He said, my friend is doing holy at his farm, do you want to come? What I understood from that, like an idiot, is my friend is doing holy at his farm, do you want to come? And I should never have understood that. I know better than this by now, I should know better than this. I've been talking to Indian guys for like two years, three years. I should know that my friend is doing holy at his farm does not mean my friend is doing holy at his farm. I should know that it means my friend's village in the middle of fucking Jatland around Mirat is doing holy. Do you want to come? And I did not know that. In my defense, I had no idea that it was going to be around fucking Mirut, and I had no idea it was going to be fucking Jatland. I hear Holy in a farm, and I'm and I'm like, amazing. There's not going to be a single fucking Firang to annoy me there, because it's like, you know, like you know how easy it would have been to go to fucking Pushkar or like Mathura, but but then it's like all the fucking white people of the world. All the, all the like Karens and Sarahs are gonna be there and, I'm gonna, and they're gonna be like, like, oh my god, like the culture and the spirituality and like, oh my god, it's so colorful, like, oh my god. And that is exactly what I try to avoid in life. I try to separate myself as much as possible from people who are like, oh my god, like the color and the spirituality, and the, oh my god. That is, that is exactly what I wanna be far away from. So I heard farm and I was like, Yes, this is this is this is where I need to be. So I say, yeah, it's sure, let's go, take me there. And he says, it's two hours away. It starts at six a.m. We'll pick you up at four. The problem with that is that I was doing Rudra's interview the day before, and we ended at like two a.m. So I was already working on like two hours of sleep. Hey, so it is uh, about three thirty in the morning. I have the brilliant idea to be awake because I asked a friend if he could bring me to a holy party that's in a farm about two hours away and we have to be there at six. So yeah, it's one of my one of my better ideas yet. So I am picked up at five because DC time, of course, and we drive there. And so in the car there was so my friend Sanjay and then a married couple who owned the car. So I will call the girl Neha and I will call the dude Dhruv. And so that is important. Dhruv was driving the car and he's the one He's the one who owned the car. So we drive for two hours, we get there and it's already difficult enough because it's a fucking gal in the middle of nowhere. And obviously the GPS doesn't work. It's like the GPS led us to the road that led us to the gal. So then we have to call the dude and ask him where his house is. And we came in by the wrong way, so his instructions made no sense to us. So we have to ask people in the village. It's like, it's, it's a bunch of shit. So we finally get there. And I'm introduced to the guy who invited us, who I will call Mayank. So we get into Mayank's house and immediately, like I realize where I am because in the streets, only men. All the women 
inside under a gunga. And it's like, to you guys, it, it's especially if you grew up in villages, it might feel normal. To me, it didn't. <laughs> and it's like, have you ever seen Toilet Ek Prem Kata? Basically that village. So that's how I've been explaining it to people this entire time. This is how I will continue to explain it. And the moment that I understand exactly where I am is when Mayank asks me, oh, how do you know Sanjay? And I was like, oh, well, I know him from Tinder. And Mayank asks, like, have you met him before? And I, I was like, no, but Chalega, it's fine. I've been doing dumb shit this entire time. And Mayang says, and you you trusted him to bring you here? And me being me and being an idiot, I, I answer, oh, it's fine. Like, all of my friends are jats. It's like, if anyone is going to kill me, it's them. Immediately, I am informed that the entire village is, in fact, jat. <laughs> <laughs> So I have, a, I have a moment of, ah, this is how I die then. And then I open my phone and I open Google Maps, which I hadn't done until then. And I realize that, ah, we're, we're, we're around Mirt. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing! <laughs> and so after that revelation, I decide to immediately ignore all of it. And if you guys have watched my bingo video, you will know that one of my objectives in India was to play a dhol or a pung in the streets. They were doing dhol circles. I don't know if there's a name for it. There were like three circles with like 30 dhols and they were playing like in, su in succession. So I get in the street and immediately I'm kind of told to go on a roof instead of in the street. Probably because I was a girl and I was outside. So outside, legit, there were only men, girls maybe under like 14, 15, Neha and me. And I'm not, I'm not gonna say it was intimidating, but it was weird. And it's like, obviously people were staring at me because gown and white. And I think most of, like legit, I think most of them had never seen a white person in real life. And it was as weird for them as it was for me. <laughs> and so after, after five, 10 minutes on the roof, Neha and I go down and go into the street because we figure out that people are not gonna eat us. And I ask someone if I can just play his doll and he gives it to me. Fucking amazing, best day of my life. So I, I get into the, the, the whole circle and I start playing the doll with everyone. Obviously everyone's looking at me, but it's fine. Like no one said anything to me. Like everyone, everyone was adorable. And it's like people are, are you know, playing holy around and every time there's a packet, like people, people like color me and it's like i'm fine i'm accepted now this is this is my life this is my family <laughs> it was it was amazing I, I scratch that off the bingo, amazing. I give the doll back to its owner, and, and then I kind of like stay around and, and film some stuff. And about five, 10 minutes later, everyone stops playing. So we go back to my uncle's place. And there I am informed that they stopped playing because I was there, because they didn't know how to react to a white girl being there, and they were kind of, scared confused it's it's like you know when when you have a spider and your mom tells you it's more afraid of you than you are of it it was basically that that was happening but but i'm also told pretty much immediately that everyone was also thinking oh no it's like it's the first time we have a white person there maybe we are getting media attention i'm sorry you're not this is the best you're getting maybe we're getting media attention we should have played the doll for like two more hours and, and people in the village were, were kind of kicking themselves for not taking that, that chance. And I, you know, I kind of feel bad because like, I, I stopped the festivities. <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, I, it, was not, it was not my fault. I didn't know, I didn't know where I was going. I was expecting a farm I get thrust into a whole village. <laughs> and so apparently in that village, or I'm guessing in most villages, but I, I don't know, but I, I'm guessing. Anyway, in that village, on Holi, it's like the, the entire village kind of moves from house to house 
and and eats there and talks there and just chills so that's what we do so my aunt takes all of us to like two three people's houses and every time i'm you know i'm introduced first because because i'm the curiosity and my aunt introduces me to his village as french ambassador kibeti which I am not, and if anyone from the village finds this, I am sorry you got lied to, <laughs> but I, I am not French Ambassador Kibeti. And I've been told since then that the entire village has been kind of googling me and trying to find me online as French Ambassador Kibeti, and they're kind of worried out because they can't find me, this is why. <laughs> it's like if I were into the whole, let's say, culture tourism? Like, like, you know the whole thing of, like, white people going to any random fucking Bishnoi village in Rajasthan and taking pictures of anyone they see with a turban and then posting it on Facebook with the caption, oh, they have nothing, but they give everything. You know, that kind of fucking white bitch shit that I fucking hate. If I had been into that, it would have been the best fucking thing in my life. If I had been into that, I, I swear to God, I would have exploded from joy. <laughs> so then after being shown around two, three houses, we go back to my uncle's place. And the people that I came with kind of wait for him to go deal with this business. And then they kind of turn to me and they're like, this is kind of boring. It's like we got there and no one is playing holy anymore. Do you, do you just want to leave? Do you want to go back? And I was like, no, because it's like it was 7.30. We arrived there like an hour ago. We drove two hours for this. Like I woke up at 4 a.m. for that. Can we not stay like five more minutes? And I knew that their decision to stay or leave depended on me because one, uh, I was the, the guest. And so India being what it is, uh, they were not going to go against my opinion. But two, mostly they wanted to be polite towards my uncle and they didn't want to just, you know, go up to him and, and be like, ah, <laughs> your shit's boring. <laughs> yeah, they, wa they wanted me to do that because, you know, they're friends and I'm not. <laughs> so then basically, as soon as I say, no, like, let's, let's, you know, let's wait five minutes. Maybe something will, will come up. Maybe the village, the, the, maybe the village people will stop being shy. <laughs> um, they bring in a tractor. <laughs> they, they, they bring in a tractor. And so we get on the tractor and my uncle drives the tractor into a field. So if any of you followed me on Insta at that time, you will have seen that I had massive bruises on my arm. I don't remember which one and on one leg. It's from the tractor because my uncle, you fucking dumbass. <laughs> we were on the road and there was a field on the left and he wanted to go into the field, but between the road and the field, there was a ditch. He drove full speed into the ditch and, and kind of, you know, said, oh, be careful once we were already past the ditch. <laughs> so on the tractor, the guys were on the cart that was being dragged by the tractor and Neha and I were on the tractor wheels. And you know, you have those metal things to hold yourself to. Well, one of them fucked me in the arm, one of them fucked me in the leg uh, because I did not want to get thrown under the tractor. So yeah, the bruises are from that. I did not get attacked. A tractor attacked me. <laughs> a jad boy drove a tractor into a ditch full speed. That's the extent of, of the attack that I suffered in that village. So we get into that field and my uncle goes to get a sugar cane and breaks it and gives it to me and he's like, you can use that. And me being white, I'm like, what do you mean I can use that? And then he explains to me how to eat it. Best day of my life. I'm gonna say this again. The day was amazing. The sugar cane made the day even better. I, I swear to God, I, I, I swear to God, it was, it was amazing. So I learned how to eat sugar cane. That's that I no one's gonna take that away from me now. Yeah. Oh, you already dipped it? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna so then. Eva, all, all the best. For First time sugar cane in but India. Sugar uh, cane with alcohol. Yeah. I'm sitting on a tractor. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. This is your life. I want this forever. Yeah. And then Neha and I kind of ask my uncle, can we drive the tractor? And he says yes, and he taught us how to drive the tractor. <laughs> so I drove the tractor around the field, 
And then after like some more maturity, we're like, ah, let's go back to the village. So we start driving the tractor back to the village. And I kind of turn to my uncle and I'm like, can, can I can I drive the tractor on the road? <laughs> and and he said yes. So I start driving my heart out it's on the road. Best day of my life. You guys, you guys know how much I love tractors. I, me and tractors love story. So I drive the tractor on the road and my uncle asks me, are you confident enough to drive it into the village? And I say no, because let's say that this is the width of the tractor. This is also the width of the road. And on the road, there are children, dogs, cows, adults, houses, cars, other tractors. And I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna fuck something up. I'm gonna fuck the tractor up. I'm gonna kill a child. I'm gonna run over a dog. And it's like, I'm, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not confident enough to, to drive the tractor into the village. And then my aunt says, because if you are, I would like you to do it because the villagers will lose their shit. And I'm like, who, who am I? Who, who am I? Of course I'm gonna drive the tractor into the village. Who am I? Of course I'm gonna, oh. So I drove the tractor into the village. The tractor, which may I remind you, was as wide as the road, had a cart behind it. I drove the tractor successfully through the fucking village back to my uncle's house. I have never been more proud of anything in my life. So then the guys that I was with kind of again turned to me and are like, ah, maybe we're not gonna do anything like now that the tractor is, is done, do you want to leave? And I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah, maybe like five more minutes because I don't know, they brought a tractor in, what are they gonna bring next? And there was a guy who was introduced to me as the funny guy of the village and he started, so the Hindi was very difficult to understand because UP accent and local dialect and lack of teeth. But he was kind of making jokes about, about me and about white people and about stuff like that. And he tried to get me to dance. I danced for like three seconds. And then we are brought to a tube well. That tube well was at the house of someone I will call Raj. And because we're going to play with water, Dhruv gives the car keys to Raj. And we put everything in the car. And when I say everything, I mean everything. I put my phones in the car. I put my passport in the car. I put my hotel key card in the car. I put my wallet in the car. I put my entire life in the car. My, the, that car contained my survival in India. So we fuck around in the tube well for like two, three hours. Some, some of the village kids come and we throw water balloons. It was amazing. I swear to God, I love playing with water. Just the, the ambiance. It was, it was amazing. It's like everyone was having fun. And it's like the, the kids were accepting me now. Maybe Mirut is not that bad. <laughs> so after two hours of playing with water, we're kind of tired of it. And uh, Neha is like, oh, I want to go home now. I don't, I don't feel safe anymore. I don't feel at ease. And um, my uncle says, well, Holi is about to end. And because it started at our house, it has to finish at our house. And since you guys are the guests, it's kind of important that you're there. So it's like 30 more minutes and, and then you can leave. And I say, okay, because I, I was like, okay, like, let's finish this. And, and then it was like 4 p.m. at this point. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, we spent the day there. It was it was amazing. Now let's let's go back home. And Neha is like, oh no, like I'm all wet. I can't cross the entire village like this. And it's like I didn't. I was all wet as well. And it's like I didn't care, but I. It, she was right. It's like in I I knew even at that time that I didn't care because I'm an idiot. But she was right. It's like we were in like as nice as the village was. This was a girl in Jatland. Every other girl over the age of like 15 was inside under a gungat and we were outside wet. <laughs> so so, so I, I knew she was right, but it's like, it, like it, it's fine. Like no one's going to do anything. It's like, you've, you've got us around you, right? And, and we, we kind of convinced her to just cross the village quickly, go to Mayang's place. We kind of shelter her. She was walking like in the middle of us, so obviously I was put in front to distract everyone from her. <laughs> um, so we get back to my uncle's place, we, we kind of eat a little bit more, we just, you know, talk with like people in the village, we say goodbye. 
we stay there for like an hour so we have time to drive a little bit and then we start crossing the village again to go back to the car that was left uh, in front of Raj's house and we're intercepted by the funny boy of the village that you know tries to you know get me again to dance and stuff and I'm like dominant and he's like haha dominant so so you know he, he starts doing his stuff and everyone was drunk by this point it's like there were people like falling down in the streets like no one could walk anymore <laughs> so everyone was drunk and after two minutes I'm like I am done I've had enough of this like the, the jokes that he was making were not as funny anymore i like it was like they were still jokes but you know they were getting you know kind of kind of aggressive and i'm like before this gets any further we're gonna stop we're gonna go back home i had a great time it, let's not ruin it now let, let you know i survived mid it let's not let's not stay in the middle of of it for for too long because we were at the point where with everyone drunk, if shit was gonna get ugly, it was gonna get ugly now. So we kind of escape the crowd, get back to the car, and then there's a conversation in Hindi that I don't understand. And I see everyone kind of stand around the car, and I ask Dhruv, I'm like, why, why, are, we not, why are we not leaving? And Dhruv tells me, they don't have the keys. I'm like, what do you mean they don't have the keys? You gave them to Raj, he has the keys. And he's like, no, he doesn't have the keys. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> what did he do with the keys? <laughs> so we kind of sit in Raj's uh, garden, I guess. Uh, like he had, he had benches and stuff, so we, we sit there. And we see, and we... Oh god, it's like just remembering it. We start seeing Raj looking around in his garden. You know, the, the parody of someone looking around like with, with his hands like on his back and being like, hmm. And it's like he was lifting up rocks. He was looking under rocks. He was like, it made no sense. He was looking around like a, like a cartoon character. And, and like Raj's, I assume it was his son, but like Raj's son started doing the same thing, going left to right, looking at stuff. And it made no goddamn sense. I'm like, why are you, why are you looking there? Like, there's no way the keys are there. And there was like a, a cow pen and they were looking in the cow pen and it made no sense because the cows did not take the key. It, it's like, I, I swear to God, it made no sense. And so we, we just, we just sat around and after like 15 minutes, we're kind of told that, oh, Raj thinks he left the keys on a table outside, but they were not on the table outside anymore. And the thing about that is that the entire village had been here since then, like two, three times. It's like anyone could have taken the keys. In all honesty, we didn't think anyone had stolen the keys like purposefully because we were next to the car. No one was gonna steal the car with us next to it. We could see inside the car that all of our stuff was still there. So no one took the keys, stole shit in the car, and then, you know, just kept the, like, it made no sense. And we were like, even if we leave by another means, it's like, my is still gonna be in the village. He still lives there. No one is gonna steal the car because he will know who it is. It made no sense. None of it made any sense. No one could have taken the keys. It's like if someone had just, like, was just blackout drunk and saw keys and was like, ooh, shiny pockets. Like, that was something else. But it's like stealing the keys to steal the car or to steal something in the car, that made no sense. So even, like, even among us, we're saying no, but, like, no one took the keys. It's like probably Raj is drunk as shit. He took the keys, put them somewhere, just doesn't remember where. And my unk starts looking around like this as well. And we're like, what the shit is happening? And my unk comes to see us and he's like, ah, I'm gonna check my house because maybe I left the keys at my house. And it made no sense because he was never in possession of the fucking keys. And, and so and so even us, like after 30, 45 minutes, we start looking around in weird places. We start lifting rocks. Like the, the table that the keys were supposedly left on, it had like a tablecloth. 
that was like perfectly flat like there could not have been anything under it we still lifted it to check if the keys were not under it and we didn't just lift it once it's like i lifted it three times Neha lifted it twice so it made no goddamn sense and we were all talking amongst ourselves and we were like we all have to be back in delhi tonight because it's like i had to be back in delhi because i was leaving for punjab the next day but all the other ones had to be back in delhi because they worked the next day and it's like their their house keys were in that car and and it it was it was you know it was kind of stressful i i don't know for the others but it's like i didn't especially panic because i thought that i didn't say it because i didn't want to anger like poor Drove even more right but i thought like worst absolute worst case scenario we break a window get all of our shit and someone like my uncle drives us back to delhi or something it's like i knew that we were not stranded in that village. I knew that we were not going to sleep in that village. I knew that we were not going to die in that village. Like, there was going to be some some jugar that was going to be found at some point. Anyway, so we're all talking amongst each other of, of, of like, this makes no sense. And why would anyone steal the keys? And, and how irresponsible can Raj be to, you know, lose the keys that we've entrusted to him as, you know, the elder and and the owner of the house and and you know like we're all talking amongst ourselves in in front of where we were sitting there was like a a stable or a shed and on that shed there was a beam and on that beam there was a hook and on that hook <laughs> the keys <laughs> so Drew was sitting right in front of it and at some point he raises his head and he points and he's like, Kiski chabi hai? And his chabi, obviously. So we get the keys, we say a silent prayer to the god of the keys. Uh, we, you know, get into the car, say goodbye to everyone. We, we are extremely relieved that we are not dying in Jatland. So the hook where the keys were is basically where my camera is right now. And we were like two meters away. We were this far away from it. We could all have sworn that five minutes before that there were no keys on that fucking hook we are all fucking certain that we would have seen them we were under that hook around that hook in front of that hook looking for the keys and they're basically 10 centimeters above eye level it's like we would have seen them we would have seen them if five minutes ago they were on that fucking hook so our working theory is that at some point, when we all kind of had our backs turned talking to each other, like in a circle, Raj kind of wandered around and put the keys back. We're convinced that he had them for the entire fucking time and that he just didn't want to give them back to us. But why? <laughs> if it's not obvious enough, uh, here's our working theory of what happened. For the entire day, I had been the one wanting to stay, and every time I had said that I wanted to stay, something had been found for me to do. Like, the first time it was a tractor, the second time they brought me to eat stuff, the third time they brought up more gulab, the fourth time it was the tuba, like, etc. It's like, every time I had said, oh, mom, maybe five more minutes in the village, something had been found to entertain Ambassador Kibeti. Right? <laughs> the moment that I was the one who said Hogya, they they did not like it. <laughs> they 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 wanted me to stay. And what we think happened is that Raj wanted the, the prestige of having Ambassador Kibeti in his house visible for way longer than anyone else. Because we were we were outside basically. It's like there was like a, a gateway to the garden, but we were visible in the garden, right? And the entire village was walking by while we were, you know, waiting for the keys to be found. And every time someone from the village was walking by, he kind of, you know, looked at us. You know, the entire village was looking at us, waiting, and we were very obviously in the Raja's house. So we legit think that he just wanted to have the firang for way longer than anyone else at his house and, you know, get, get all the all the swag, all the, get all the clout from that. And, and, but, but yeah, after like an hour when he decided that it wasn't funny anymore, or when we started getting visibly, you know, mad and or scared, he put them back. But 
that is what we started calling a hostage taking because we legit could not leave the village and we're not we're not certain maybe the keys had always been there maybe we're about 80 percent certain that this is exactly what happened but there's you know the, that one in five chance of the keys were always there and we were just blind and it's just our fault but there, there's legit an 80% chance I was taken hostage in fucking Jatland. And there's, there's something that I want to say about this. First of all, I am convinced that literally no one in the village had any nefarious intention. If our theory is correct, at best it was like a, a bad prank, you know, like, oh my god, it's just a prank, bro. At best it was that. But I am convinced that no one in the village had any nefarious intent towards me. Because if anyone in the village had had that kind of intentions, I would have been dead. I would have been dead because it's like, you put me against one jet, Chalega. You put me against two jets, probably Chalega. You put me against... You put me against an entire village? Oh yeah. Because I'm convinced that if anyone in the village had had those kinds of intentions, who, who is the village going to defend? The outsider or their boy? I am convinced that if I disappear in that village, no one was gonna find me, mostly because I didn't tell anyone where I was going because I didn't know where I was going, but you know. So okay, I will I will say this again, everyone in the village was adorable and I am absolutely fine coming back for next holy because they've already asked me to come back for next holy. However, I think that there are mainly three things that helped with you know, everyone in the village being nice. So first, me being like proxy invited by my unk helped because because I was at his house, everyone in the village kind of understood that I was, you know, with him so that if they, if they fucked with me, they fucked with him. Two, I think it actually helped. I was introduced as French ambassador Kibeti. If I had been introduced as just a random French dentist, I don't think, I don't think I would have been as, as safe. Because I think the whole ambassador stuff k kind of was like, ah, if anything happens to her, there's gonna be, you know, there's gonna be repercussions, there, there's gonna be this, there's gonna be that, there's gonna be the media. And I think, I think it did help a, a little bit. Three, I speak Hindi. And, and as shit as my Hindi is, and as difficult to understand that village's dialect was, two things, if shit had been about to start, I probably would have, you know, heard or under understood that shit was about to start. And if shit actually started, I could have maybe negotiated my way out of the shit. So I think it, it actually did help. But yeah, because I think that if I had just been a random white chick coming into that village for no goddamn reason, not knowing anyone, just, you know, crashing the party, I, I think I would not have been treated as well. I think the village treated me really well. So, you know, even even if, you know, the village and I were kind of scared of each other in the beginning, by the by the end of the of the afternoon, kids were coming to talk to me and they didn't speak any English. And I didn't speak enough Hindi to, you know, interact with them properly, but some of them found out that the word that they were looking for in English was balloon. So a, a young girl just came to ask me balloon. And, you know, I understood that she wanted to, you know, throw like water balloons and we did that. And I took selfies with a lot of the people from the village. And whenever they were dancing, there were ladies inviting me in to dance. And the, legit, it was, it was amazing. And I did really feel welcome in that village. It, it did feel really weird because of the whole, you know, Gungat and, you know, the whole culture stuff. But I really felt that no one in the village wanted to fuck with me. And honestly, I did not expect that from a fucking girl in Jatland in Mira. That was my my holy story time. And yeah, I, I hope I hope it entertained you guys. I'll be back very soon with more story time bullshit from my India trip because God knows I've got hours and hours of content that I can make about it because I am terrible at making choices that will keep me alive. That's the teaser for the next video. I am terrible at keeping myself alive and I do dumb shit all the time. <laughs> but yeah, please like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you soon with more of my own fucking bakchori. Bye. For anyone
anyone who, who stays for the post credit scenes, uh, I'm gonna reward you with something that's like TMI, but this is the bra I wore on Holy. It is clearly extremely fucking red. It has been washed like six times and it's not going away. So I think that on top of that fucking shirt, uh, the, the bra is also a survivor of Holy. <laughs>